Protect yourself at all times. Any questions from the challenger? No questions. Any questions from the champion? Let's get it on. Come on. Yes, the always pointed Mills Lane, who's a district judge out of Reno. As we're getting set for Julian Jackson, his first title defense of the WBC middleweight crown. As he takes on the number one challenger, Dennis Milton, scheduled for 12. Here we go, round one. Julian Jackson, the hawk, the champion, and the gold with the red trim. Dennis Milton, the magician, the challenger, number one contender in the black and white trunks. And Jackson, as he told us, going right at Milton. And Milton looks like he's got the game plan of holding on, and I hope he doesn't think he can do that for 12 rounds. He's got to do a little bit of fighting besides just grabbing him. I asked Milton what he has to do to upset Jackson. He said, my boxing ability and boxing savvy will take care of that. He said Jackson's going out. Jackson told us he doesn't think Milton can withstand the pressure of his punches. Right now he's fighting with a little, little bit of apprehension is uh, the magician. The magician is Dennis Milton, who is 16-2-1 with five knockouts only, 19 pro fights at age 30. Why so few fights? Why he's so inactive since turning pro in 85? He told us he may be in active fighting, but he has been sparring with world-class opponents, as we mentioned. But, Ferdy, I really wonder about that. That's absolutely, um, it's nonsense. I mean, you, you have to have tune-up fights. You have to get in there in competition. In the gym won't do it, and especially not if you're going to face a Julian Jackson, who is very good. Good right hand by Jackson. Jackson looking to air it out here in the very first round. Milton foolishly holding on to the rope instead of covering up. He is very apprehensive and tight. All that ring rust is showing. He certainly, certainly doesn't look like he belongs in the ring with Julian Jackson. Midway through the first, Milton, who last fought just to set the record straight June 28th, the second round TKO over Pat Brennan in Vegas said he feels Jackson doesn't have the skills and that this fight won't go to the judges. Well, right now, Jackson's looking to end it in the opening round. And down goes Milton. He does not look like he is going to get up. He looks like he's part of the fixture. He's part of the canvas. The magician is down for the count. And it is all over in round number one. Julian Jackson retains his WBC middleweight championship, knocking out Dennis Milton. So much for the theory, so much for the theory that you can uh, go to the gym and work 18 months and hope to face a guy like Julian Jackson. This is Jackson's 10th first round knockout. And he is now 42 and 1 with 40 KOs, 6 and 0 in championship bouts. His average rounds per championship bout for this one in the first. Well, fights like that, he really doesn't have to worry about his eyesight because he didn't get hit once. And Dennis Milton is still being attended to flat on his back. Well, he. The uh, precaution that they take here, and they do uh, in New Jersey and in Florida, many states, is to leave him down, even though his eyes are open and he responds until he's fully clear-headed. Then they sit him up, and then they, from there they progress to standing. His eyes are open. He seems to be reacting, so it doesn't look like uh, any difficulty there. It's just a resounding knockout. When Julian Jackson knocks you out, he knocks you out. I mean, they could count to 100. And we feel for Dennis Milton right now. Mills Lane is hovering over him to make sure at least he's comfortable. Well, and he's in bad shape, getting up very slowly. The doctor's there, of course. They should, they should not be in a hurry. I mean, there's no point in being in a hurry to make a guy get up. I mean, let him get up when he's nice and real, when you know that he has his senses about him so he doesn't topple over again or so nothing else happens. Julian, on the other hand, doesn't look like he's even uh, started to sweat right. Milton is on his feet, so thank goodness for that. Now they'll sit him down. Well, when a fighter fights as apprehensively as he as he has, anything that touches him seems to, to respond even more. Now, let's, let's take a look at that first shot. Boom, that right hand, and you can see the reaction was to fold. I mean, there was just absolutely, and then to grab and grab hold. He, there was no concept of, of uh, counter punching here or to protect himself. Now, let's take a look from a different view. You see how solid it, land, it landed and how this guy's just so tight. He's just not loose and limber. He, can't, he doesn't go with a punch. It's just like hitting a bag. Look at that, boom. 
it's just a um, that's unfortunate he was too tight he didn't get a chance to catch himself and start in his own rhythm it's kind of unfair but uh, for him because he just didn't have it to uh, to be in there with Julian Jackson let's see what happened at the end of the fight when Jackson who's one of the great finishers in boxing finally puts the quietus on the hapless magician and there goes Dennis Milton and part of the canvas well the magician pulled a disappearing act here yes. against Julian Jackson well no magic tonight it was just a, a straight hard performance by a, a really good champion in Julian Jackson let's take another look at that the right hand that lands alongside of his face just short circuits all the neurons and there is nothing left to keep him standing or in the conscious world he's knocked out Julian Jackson's mission to unify the middleweight Jesus title Friday. after WBA champ Mike McCallum meets IBF champ James Tony in December. McCallum is the only man ever to beat Julian Jackson back in 1986 when they fought for the junior middleweight championship. So let's just hope that uh, the challenger Dennis Milton is okay. Let's get the official word from our ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. Two minutes, ten seconds in round number one. The winner by way of knockout and still the WBC middleweight champion of the world, Julian the Hawk Jackson. So there you have it, Julian Jackson retaining his WBC middleweight championship his first title defense. Here at the Mirage in Las Vegas, we told you at the top of the broadcast about the knockout percentage of the stellar Julian Jackson. Here's where he stands. He's at the head of the class in terms of current world champions and their highest knockout percentage. You notice number four, Evander Holyfield. I mentioned Mike McCallum, a man he would love to get to once again in a rematch. He lost to him. The only man he ever lost to. Ferdy Pacheco standing by in the ring. Ferdy? Well, one of the best kept secrets in boxing. You've got this Woo! fantastic knockout record. You're a most amazing kind of fighter. When you get people finished, you don't waste time, do you? That's right. Thank you very much. But first of all, let me say... Uh, I got to say thanks to my Lord and Jesus, my Savior, Jesus Christ. I dedicate this one to him. And I also just like to thank Dan King. And this fight was dedicated to a good friend of mine that had a severe heart attack, Elroy Tatum. Tatum, this for you. Very good. Now, this has to lead to you fighting the winner of the other two champions in order to unify the title under one man. Let's go. I've been waiting for this a long time. McCallum, I'm ready. I've got the experience now. I was green when I met you, but now Julian Jackson is ready to make his fame. You're referring to Mike McCallum, the only man to beat you. That's right. When he caught you nice and green and okay. fresh, and now you're ready for Mike McCallum specifically? Definitely. I got a whole lot of people out there that is on my list. <laughs> they call me the hawk because there's a lot of chicken running from the hawk. <laughs> and I want the, the world to know that Julian Jackson is making his mark in the boxing today. Well, there wasn't too much magic to the magician today. Let's go, did, Terry Norris. Did you feel that his, in, you know, his inexperience and the fact he hadn't fought for 18 months he was so he looked so cold and he looked so tight did you think that made it easier to knock him out i, I think uh terry Norris was intimidated uh my, my i mean uh dennis milton was intimidated because